Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss market equilibrium and welfare analysis when we have a monopoly. So in the video I'm going to go through an example where the monopolist faces an inverse demand function P, that's price, is equal to 100 minus Q, that's quantity, and the marginal cost of production for the firm is MC, that's marginal cost, is equal to 40 plus 2 times Q. Now the plan for the video is to find and draw the monopolist's equilibrium price and quantity and then I'm going to go ahead and do a welfare analysis. So I have marked chapters throughout the video so if you want to skip to any particular part just check the description for timestamps. All right, so I'm going to start off with thinking about a diagram. I'm going to draw two axes. Price is going to be on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal. Now our demand curve, uh, I'm going to draw that first and it actually comes through like this. I found the value of the axis intercepts, so the two 100s, in the following way. So when in our demand function price is equal to zero, that will be our quantity axis intercept. So if I do that, I get 0 is equal to 100 minus Q. Adding Q to both sides, I get Q is equal to 100. So that's that point. To find our price axis intercept, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to set quantity equal to 0, and I get price is equal to 100 minus 0, so price is equal to 100. The next thing I'm going to do is draw our marginal cost curve. So marginal cost I can see from our equation has a price axis intercept at 40. So I can tell this because when quantity is equal to zero, marginal cost is, well, 40 plus two times zero, so 40. The next thing I'm going to do in order to help me draw out my marginal cost curve is just find where our marginal cost and our demand curves intersect. This is actually going to be a useful point for us to have later on when we do our welfare analysis. And it's also going to now give me a point on our diagram from which I can anchor my marginal cost line to the price axis intercept that I just found. So to find this point, I set marginal cost equal to demand. So substituting in, I get 40 plus 2Q, that's marginal cost, is equal to 100 minus Q, that's our demand. Now solving for Q, I'm going to first add Q to both sides, so I get 40 plus 3Q is equal to 100. Taking away 40 from both sides, I get 3Q is equal to 60. And dividing both sides by 3, I get Q is equal to 20. And so my marginal cost curve, as well as starting from the axes at price equal to 40, well, I know now that it intersects the demand curve when quantity is equal to 20. The next thing that I'm going to do is to find our marginal revenue function, which I need for our profit maximization. And actually, our marginal revenue is equal to 100 minus 2Q. What I've done here is I've kept the same price axis intercept as our demand, which is 100, and I've just doubled the slope of the demand curve. Since, and I have a video on this, I'll link to it below, marginal revenue when we have a linear or straight line demand function like I have here, well, it has the same price axis intercept as our demand and just has double the slope. So visually, our marginal revenue is like this. It will start at 100 and it's going to intercept our quantity axis intercept at 50. So that's exactly halfway between the origin and the quantity axis intercept of our demand curve. And that's just due to the doubling of the slope. Uh, so it makes it twice as steep. Here, when I doubled the slope coefficient on my demand in order to find marginal revenue, again, I just had to make sure, or you have to make sure that price is isolated on the left-hand side of the demand equation. Otherwise the function is in the wrong form and you won't get the slope coefficient correct. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is find our profit maximization level of production, which I can find by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So we get 100 minus 2Q, that's our marginal revenue, is equal to 40 plus 2Q. Now solving for quantity, I'm first going to add 2Q to both sides. So I get 100 is equal to 40 plus 4Q. 
Taking away 40 from both sides, I get 60 is equal to 4Q. Dividing both sides by 4, I get Q is equal to 15. To find the price associated with this level of production, I'm going to substitute quantity equal to 15 into my demand curve. So I'll get P is equal to 100 minus 15, so 85. Visually, we end up with this. Our monopolist sells 15 units for $85 each in this market. That's their profit maximizing output. Right, so that's our equilibrium and our diagram. Now I'm going to think about our welfare analysis. And to think about welfare, I'm going to think about consumer surplus, producer surplus, and any dead weight loss. So our consumer surplus, or CS, is going to be found by taking the area below demand above price just across those units supplied. So just here. Now this area captures all of the units traded where the marginal benefit of consumption, which is tracked by our demand curve, is above our price. So the consumers in this portion of the demand curve have relatively high marginal benefit of consumption and they would have paid more for their consumption, but they didn't have to because the price was lower. So that's good for them. To find the area, we just use the equation half times base times height. Our base is 15 and our height is 100 minus 85. So that's 15 too. So this comes out at 112.5. Now our producer surplus is here, this trapezium. This area captures the fact that for those units supplied up to Q is equal to 15, the marginal cost of production is lower than the price that the producer gets for those units. So the producer would have sold for a lesser amount, but they didn't have to. The price that they got for these units was higher than the cost of production. Now there is a formula for the area of a trapezium, but I can never remember it. So I always just work it out as rectangle plus triangle. So I hope you can see uh, that that trapezium can decompose into that rectangle plus triangle. Our area of our rectangle is just base times height and the area of our triangle is half times base times height. The base of the rectangle is, well, just 15. And the height is just here. So 85 minus this level, which I can find by substituting Q is equal to 15 into our marginal cost or our marginal revenue function. I'm going to put it into marginal cost and I get marginal cost is equal to 40 plus two times 15 is equal to 70. So the height of our rectangle is 85 minus 70. Now for the area of the triangle, the base of the triangle is 15 and the height is 70. That's the level we just found minus 40, which is the price axis intercept of our marginal cost function. So in my calculations, I get 225 plus 225 for a total of 450. And I can shade that whole area in there to show it properly on the diagram. The total surplus in this market, and I'll just call it TS subscript monopoly, is just consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So 112.5 plus 450, which is all equal to 562.5. Now there is what we call deadweight loss, which is actually this area here. That's the space below demand above marginal cost between the monopolist level of output, which is 15, up until that quantity equal to 20, which we found before. So let's just think about how to interpret this. And I'm just going to take off some of the shading and some of the other curves for a minute. And let's just concentrate on our demand curve, which can be interpreted as the marginal benefit of consumption and our marginal cost curve. Now this quantity of 20 is actually what we call the efficient amount of production. I'll call that level QE. The reason why we call it efficient is because QE gives us the maximum amount of surplus possible. The reason why it does this is because the, that production of 20 units, in, in this case, exhausts all of the possibilities for trade. So where the marginal benefit of consumption, which is our demand curve, is above or equal to our marginal cost of production. In exhausting all of these levels of trade, this exhausts all of the opportunities for more surplus for our consumers or our producers. 
Thus QE is the level that maximizes our total surplus. So in this example, I found that point of production by setting our marginal cost equal to demand. And because demand is interpreted as telling us about marginal benefit, to say this in another way, we can find that efficient level of production by setting marginal cost equal to marginal benefit. It is worth saying that this efficient level of production is also what would have obtained in perfect competition, since one of the results of perfect competition is that price is equal to marginal cost. So visually, that's this level here where our demand, which tells us the price, you can see that from the equation, price is equal to 100 minus Q, well, where that is equal to marginal cost. Algebraically, we find this level by putting Q is equal to 20 into our inverse demand curve. So the price would be P is equal to 100 minus 20, so 80. So if the price was equal to marginal cost, the price would have been 80, the market would have produced 20 units. This whole area under demand above price would have been consumer surplus. The whole area here below the price above marginal cost would have been producer surplus. If we check the numerical value of these areas, both are triangles, so we would use half times base times height. For our consumer surplus, the base is 20 and the height is, well, 20, that's 100 minus 80. So all equal to 200. For our producer surplus, the base would be 20 and the height would be, well, 40. So that's 18 minus 40. So all equal to 400. Our total surplus then would be 200 plus 400, so 600. If we compare this outcome to monopoly, so I'll just go back to the monopoly diagram you can see that there is this gap here in the surplus that appears and that's our deadweight loss. So we can understand our deadweight loss in monopoly as the loss in total welfare as we move away from the efficient level of production that is most commonly associated with perfect competition. Algebraically, if we take the difference between the total surplus when we produce the efficient amount and total surplus under monopoly, that should give us that area of deadweight loss. I do have the numbers here. So total surplus when producing up to the efficient amount was 600. Under monopoly, it's 562.5. So the difference is 37.5. Now we can find this area also by just finding the area of the triangle here, which is half times base times height. It's also a good way of confirming that our calculations are correct. If we do that, the base is, well, 20 minus 15, and the height is 85 minus this level here, which we found before was 70. So sorry, I accidentally removed it. Uh, that was marginal revenue or marginal cost evaluated at Q is equal to 15. So the base is five, the height is 85 minus 70, so 15. So the whole equation by my lights is equal to 37.5. So that's as expected. Really what's happened here, or one way to understand what's happened here, is that the monopolists have raised their prices above marginal cost, and as a result, less has been traded and we've moved away from the efficient level of production. The producers have done better than in perfect competition, or you know, if price was equal to marginal cost, but there has been some surplus that has been lost, that's our deadweight loss. This loss of efficiency is really one of the big reasons why monopolies are often seen by economists as something to be avoided or otherwise managed. In particular, the consumers have lost out in this scenario. Right, so that's monopoly equilibrium and welfare analysis. I hope that the video has helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are keeping safe and happy um, and see you next time.